Hello again. Uh, this time around, I am actually going to machine a cylinder head. Uh, of course, before I do that, I am uh, going to do the most important thing is I'm going to wash the cylinder head before so I don't have any extra debris, oil, or residue on the machine. And it's a very good practice. Wash the cylinder head before, machine it, and then wash the cylinder head after to get rid of all the uh, metal shavings. Alrighty, I'll get, I'm going to go over next door and I'm going to throw this in a jet washer for I'd say half an hour or so. Alright, I'll see you in half an hour. Alright, <clears throat> I'm back. I just washed the cylinder head so it's uh, actually oil free. So it's nothing, nothing really dripping off of it. Yes, it's a little bit dirty. I did not pull the valves out. They're in there. Uh, the most important thing is when I start machining, that they do not stick past the surface deck. So uh, this surface I'm uh, going to be resurfacing. These valves, if they stick past that, I need to remove them. Uh, otherwise, the machine will machine them as well. So in this case, when you look at it, from a side, you don't see any valves sticking out, so that's great. Spark plugs are out as well. Uh, this cylinder head is so nice and warm, so I'm going to set it on the floor and uh, I'm going to start showing it to you on the machine. So, on the floor. All right. So, uh, step one, uh, we have a uh, Rottler leveling table that, uh, in one of the videos, you can find how to remove it out of the machine. Uh, the machine itself is a Rottler S85A. Uh, step one is going to be loosen all these fixtures that you see on here. Which is five fixtures. Somebody over tighten that. That one is loose, that one is loose. That one is loose as well. And, all right, great. So I use three quarter inch uh, wrench for that. All right, now the other thing is I'm gonna loosen up these little pieces right over here these things I'm gonna loosen there's an Allen uh, screw and uh, that is uh, 7 30 seconds all right here we go we're loose all right so uh, for most part uh, I, I see that the table is tilted towards the back but it's fine that's kind of a a good thing so the solder head doesn't slide towards me all right, so the uh, next step is uh, I'm going to put the cylinder head upside down. The valve cover surface is going to be laying on these four blocks. This is just a thing to wedge it down with. So for now, I'm gonna, the wedger I'm going to move over to the side. And uh, I'm going to start on this. So here we go, cylinder head. What I'm looking for is a little edge like this so uh, head gasket surface valve cover surface so this uh, valve cover surface is going to go down uh, the reason why I need this uh, ridge is that these little hooks they will uh, uh, the cylinder head will get wedged between that and the surface all right, I will turn these so the Allen keys uh, points towards the back, so I can tie in it later. And uh, let's see, which side has a better ridge? They're both about the same. I'm gonna put the intake side towards the back. Right. The only downside for me right now is that I did leave some bolts there. Uh, give me a second, I'll set it up back here and I'll show it to you what I end up doing. Alright. There we go. We're gonna come along the back. So you can see exactly what I was doing there. Sorry one second. I know it's not quite a professional video, but it's fine. All right. All right, so uh, here we go. Our goal is going to be 
let me lightly tighten these. These two getting wedged up against the ridge that's back, this is under here. So now when I put it down in there, it's, it's getting wedged. So if I push forward, I can't lift up the back. That's what's wedging it up. All right, uh, in the front, uh, this particular one, I'm just going to put it underneath in the corner, tying it down. So. That's tight. Let me double check the back ones. That's tight. That's tight. This is tight. Tight. The Allen key, we, Allen wrench, we don't need anymore. So, next step is going to be get rid of the rock. The way we get rid of the rock is very, very simple. Let's come around the front. How do we get rid of the rock? This end right here, this piece. Can, can drop down or raise back up. So we're going to drop it down. We're going to put it under this corner. And right now, you'll notice there is rock. And then I'll start lifting this up. Okay. Before I continue, I am going to tie down this particular fixture. Alright, so I have uh, all four of them tight down to the table, but the sonar head is still a little bit loose. So, drop it down, I'll loose quite a bit, start raising it back up. And uh, you, you're not trying to turn it, you're trying to just put a little tension on it. Once the wheel stops, tap four corners, but don't forget to put tension down onto the head. Alright, seems fine. Now I'm going to use this particular thing, this wedge, to push the head down and back. So, great. Won't fit here. All right. In that case, I'm going to have to back up a step, loosen that, loosen this, move it out of the way, shift my wedge towards the middle, put this one back, tighten it up. back and forth anymore. All right, so this, this particular one now, I'm going to loosen it. It wasn't super tight, so try not to hit it with the wrench. That was not a smart idea. All right, so I'm going to uh, put it somewhere in the webbing so it pushes down. So uh, I'm going to find a, have a good area. That looks like it's going to be a good area. All right, and uh, I'm going to tie down the fixture to the table first. Fixture is tight. I won't need a uh, wrench anymore. All right. The way this works is uh, in certain area, this slides in and out. Once you start turning it, it will uh, get jammed up inside a specific nut, and uh, it will start pushing down and in. Not gorilla tight, just tight. And as you notice, uh, this was tight prior to turning this. So. Now, solder head is mounted in the fixture. Now, all I need to do is level it and machine it. All right, step one, I'm gonna level it like this. So, uh, at this, actually, no. Let, let me level it like this because it's by far a uh, bad, ang bad angle. So, uh, when you're leveling it this way, there is a handle right around here, this handle. It needs to be loosened. You loosen the handle, and then you can uh, turn it so it levels it so in the right direction. So 
Let's come closer so you can possibly see the level. Wrong direction. Here we go. Too far. For now that looks fine. Now I'm going to actually turn the level and level it the other direction. To do so I need to use the, the other wheel down here. So this wheel over here was for the leveling of like this. This wheel is for leveling like this. So right now I'm leveling for this particular way and uh, lengthwise and I'm going to use this wheel if need to be. Actually, I might not even need to touch that. This particular one, I recommend uh, catching a level on the way up. Yes, it is a long process. All right. Here we go. That's leveled. Let me double check this particular way. Tiny bit off, let me just correct that. That's fine. Alright. That looks fine. Once you're done, you tighten this up, not super tight, okay? Not gorilla tight, you don't you're not trying to break it off. Alright, so double checking. This level did not move. And this level I'll double check here. If it's different from here to here, you want to catch the happy medium. So I just leveled this side out. And for some reason it tweaked. It moved. And the other thing is, with this level, you want to try it this way, and turn the level around, and try it the other way. See? This way it's uh, pretty much leveled. This way, it's not. The level does have a little bow to it uh, in the middle. I don't know why, but fa from factory it seems like. So if you're dealing with uh, not a solid chunk, uh, piece of metal, it's a little bit harder. All right, that looks good. That looks fine. I'm gonna try this side. This side looks fine. That's fine. No, it's a demo head anyway, so it's not going back in the car. It's just for demonstration purposes. I couldn't find a light one. All right, so uh, everything is leveled. Everything is nice and tight. I'm just going to tap the head to make sure that it's not loose. Great. So the head is fixed in the machine. Our next step is going to be setting it up in the uh, on the data over here. So now it's ready. All right, uh, a couple things is uh, there is a couple different ones. I'm gonna go for my own uh, Philip aluminum. All right, uh, number one uh, thing to notice it says E stop. That means that this emergency stop is engaged. Disengage that. Uh, next thing, all right, now there's a home button. The reason why is the machine has not been set to home after I powered it up. 
So once you hit that, the machining head will go up and to the right, leveling itself out. All right, now next thing I'm gonna double check to make sure that I have the proper cutter in it. Uh, the cutters I'm using is a round cutter, uh, three eighths uh, round, like this little guys. Uh, there's two different ones uh, that I have here. One is a 464 cast iron, one is an A25 for aluminum application. Uh, all right, let me show you where the cutter is and how this uh, looks like. Uh, since the I have only two boxes, one of them has no cutter in it, uh, which is aluminum one. Uh, that's the one I need. I'm just dub gonna double check where it's at. Uh, all right, just excuse this. All right. All right, let me get the camera out so you can see things better. All right, so here is our cutter area. Uh, there's two of them. This is the one I'm going to be looking for. It does have a cutter. I'm going to turn it sideways and I'm going to take a look to make sure that the right end is up. What you will notice here is that this round cutter that's right inside here, this little guy, uh, the uh, darker side is uh, facing towards the bolt. Uh, that is the right direction because this machine is going to be spinning this particular way. So. Uh, dark piece is the CBN, very hard material. Alright, let's continue on. Alright. Alright. Next. A uh, couple uh, things is uh, there's a couple speed set here, uh, 1400 and 1600, uh, depth of cut 1000 and 1000 on a rough uh, speed of travel 2000s and 15000s per revolution of a cutter. Uh, uh, it's some, it's not the, the exact numbers I always use, but it's a uh, some, it's a good number to start off with at times. Uh, I highly recommend uh, matching. Uh, RPM speeds and everything else for a proper material. All right, next step is going to be dropping the head and finding a proper uh, vertical and horizontal zeros, which right now they're all the way up. So it's uh, these two, the position of the head. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring, sorry, go back, sorry. All right, I'm using these two sliders. I'm going to use to move the head around. This moves it down and up. This moves it left and right. So I'm going to use those and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Here's a dial indicator that's mounted to the head, to the fixture. I'm going to make sure that this dial indicator lines up with this surface and it tells me zero for on the first time around. Not the second zero, not the third zero. All right, here we go. Head comes down, comes over uh, to the left. Too far. All right, start bringing it down more. All right, uh, if anything, once I get this close, which is I'm at, uh, I got five more thousands to go, I can, on the machine, instead of trying to go up and down, there is the minus one thousands or ten thousands, plus one thousands or ten thousands, so I can get it uh, very, very close. So I'm gonna hit those buttons one at a time and get my perfect zero. All right. Let's see. Dial indicator down, down, and uh, down one thousandth, 
two and three and four and five. All right, here we go. We're at perfect zero. Uh, I'm going to scoot this cutter a little bit more to the right or left, sorry. That's going to be my starting. Once I get uh, all of that down, what I'm going to do is come over here to a machine and set horizontal zero, vertical zero. That is my starting point. Next thing I'm going to do is grab a tape measure and measure the length of the cylinder head. What I'm measuring here is going to be, sorry, I get constantly confused. The length of the cylinder head starting from the center of the machine. So, center of the machine, end of the cylinder head looks like, I'm going to type in 25 uh, inch. So I go back into a machine and I type in, I need over here, 25 uh, inches of travel. Enter. All right, so uh, that's all set. Uh, this machine is set to cut two thousandths. I'm gonna set this to cut total of uh, five thousandths. And hopefully that cleans up. Uh, and uh, the other thing is I'm gonna change this, uh, the rough cut to uh, two thousandths. Wait, not twenty thousandths, clear. Zero point zero zero two, enter. All right, here we go. Uh, I think that's going to be pretty good and uh, everything looks like it's set up. I'm going to tap on the cylinder head one more time to hear if anything is loose and uh, I'm going to close the lid, close the machine and I am going to pretty much hit start. Uh, a couple things about hitting start is first time around you hold it, the light, uh, the button will light up different color. Here it goes, it's blue color now, and yellow, and now it's set. You can see that it dropped ahead two thousandths from the R0, and uh, I'm gonna hit start, I'm gonna hold my hand over the uh, stop button just in case if anything happens. did it on the length but it's fine and I think I overdid it on depth but it's fine since it's a demo head you want to remove the least amount of material as possible and you can actually start seeing that the cylinder head is uh, having a mirror finish inches is going to go the other direction uh, I'm gonna pause it by hitting the same start button all right uh, looks like it machined a little more over here than did over here but that's totally fine next cut will clean that up uh, I'm just gonna draw some uh, stuff in black uh, just to kind of make sure that it machines it the other thing is you can actually see where it's not where the surface is not perfect so that's still not machine surface that is almost machine surface so I got a little bit more to go uh, I'm not gonna waste time I'm just gonna put it on pause I'll show you the uh, product as the machine finishes it off alright see you in a little bit and I'm gonna unpause the machine all right, machine just finished off machining. Uh, now I can actually open up the lid and take a look at the finished product. 
uh, the finished product is kind of hard to see. And then bring it maybe closer. Maybe it'll be easier to see. I don't know how well it's going to focus. The pretty much the whole thing has a mirror finish. It's, there is you can see minute lines through it, but it's pretty much a mirror finish as you can see. I'm putting it in my hand, and that's a beautiful mirror finish. Uh, and the other thing is, the whole thing is machined. Every corner of it, everything is good. So now we can pretty much take the cylinder head off. And if you have more than one of these cylinder heads, all you need to do is loosen this and uh, put another cylinder head in there of identical kind, and uh, everything else is pretty much set up. Uh, don't forget to get rid of the rock in that case. All right. Uh, in that case, we're pretty much done. And the only thing I'm going to do is uh, before I'm finished, I'm going to raise up this head out of the way because once I power down the machine I wouldn't be able to do that so get it out of my way all right and I think it's all the way yeah all right so we're done and just all right we're done